Now that was impressive. Do you yeah. need Find.
Signal of this. Going down.
I see you, champion. Sit, please. There's someone in Arrowhand who's been looking for you, champion. Goes by the name of Moralo. Sounded like he had something important to discuss. I'll try to stop by Arrowhand when I can, then. Stay alert, you soldier. You this chance. The sweat, and I'm still not cooling off. Your marks are true. Aloy of the Nora, you honor us with your presence. She who has found the wings of the ten. No need for ceremony, Chaplain. Very well. May I ask what brings you here? Just checking up on Arrowhand. Draka's death didn't go over well, but Yara has been true to her word. Water rations have flowed steadily in. I'll keep watch here until someone emerges to take Draka's place. Looks like it's in good hands then. I should get going. May the Ten guide your way. of the grove. I want to reward you. You said something about rewarding me? You don't have to. Regala had to be stopped. That battle was almost the end of me and my partner Sosek. During the fighting, I was surrounded by rebels just as I saw a machine about to strike him down. Then your bomb fell from the sky and he was saved. We all were. I can't properly repay you for what you did, but I can offer you something. You really don't need to. Honor is payment enough for any warrior, I know, but Greenshine will buy more blades. I discovered a cache of it inside a cave on a mountain to the southwest of here, right at the edge of the desert. It's guarded by machines, but if you can fly in and bomb them as you did in the battle, you can claim the Greenshine for yourself. Hmm. I might give it a try. 
Do you want me to bring some back to you? No, no. It's for you. All of it. The least I can give you for saving Sosek's life. I only wish I could be there to see you swoop from the sky and claim it. Gosh, a green shine could come in handy. Sounds like I'll have to fly up there. And a bomb from a Horus would make dealing with those machines a lot easier. Fly up that mountain. But maybe I should follow that Tanakh's advice and get a bomb first. There's a Horus just southwest of the Osram in Vegas. That should have a bomb. There's the Horus. Time to pick up a bomb. Machines. Must be the spot Morala told me about. 
This bomb should come in handy. Hunter killer. Might be easy to take down. to drop that bomb. those machines and pick up that green shine.
Town's clear of machines. Time to find that green shiner. Now that's a find. Gonna be tough.
the machines I have to deal with. There's the cash. I just need to get past those vines. I should pick up that green shine now. Shut this metal flower down. It was nice of that Tanakh soldier to point me this way. I wasn't looking for thanks, but I'll take it. Hey, patrol. Went well, I take it.
Time to get out. Drop it off. to hide. Need to adjust.
Now that was impressive. The guard of defeat was the only outcome that could be Fight like I'm going, Rebecca. You can't lie still. Let me make the room worse. What's going on here? You're her. The one from the embassy. Please, you have to go after my father. He's going to get himself killed in the stand of the Sentinels. The forest beyond the village. Everyone else seems to have forgotten that we don't abandon our own. Venera? <sighs> if you're gonna drag the Outlander into this, at least tell her the whole story. Garoka gave her that stab wound. It was an accident. How did your father accidentally stab you? For a while now, he's been sneaking out of the village to hunt alone in the stand. Sometimes he's gone for days. So this time, I followed him to his hunting camp, tried to convince him to come home. Words led to fists, and somewhere in the middle of it all, his knife. He was already gone when I fell. You would have bled to death had I not come looking for you. It doesn't make any sense. The way he looked at me. It was like I was a stranger. Perhaps it's time to recognize... He's fine! He has to be. I can't make any promises, but I'll find him if I can. At least to see if he's all right. Where's his hunting camp? Southeast of here. Thank you. Glad that's settled. Now you need to rest. Stand firm. Venera said her father's hunting camp should be near here. Camp. This must be where Fenira confronted her father. I might be able to pick up his trail with my focus. 
supplies for traps. Groga must have been preparing for a hunt. Blood. Must be Fenera's. From when her father gashed her. A jar of oil knocked over. Maybe when Garoka and Fenira were fighting. Some of the oil might have gotten on Garoka. Looks like there's a trail I can follow. Let's see where this leads. against a claw strider and a lot of traps I, trap. I must be garoka i better help him now, let's see what you've got Fight like you're Tanakh, but you're not one of us. State your name, Outlander. I'm Aloy. You must be Garoka. Venera asked me to find you. She's back in the village. She's recovering from a wound from your fight. Then she's in good hands. Come, we have to get moving. There's a squad deeper in the forest. They're about to walk into an ambush. By who? Rebels? That's what you want to call them. Spineless scabs. All the same, I could use your spear. What do you say? Fine. Where is the squad? This way. We'll make faster time if we cut through the Sentinels. How do you know about the attack? We've been watching enemy movements in the mountain pass. They've been trying to take our territory for years. This is just their latest attempt. Years? Rakala's rebellion isn't that old. Something's off here. What? No!
I was so sure they were... Never mind. We have to get to the squad. Quiet now. We're almost there. J-Squad, we're... What? No! It's an old memorial for fallen soldiers. I think we're a lot more than too late. This can't be right. Garoka. Who are you, Outlander? How do you know my name? I'm Aloy. Venera asked me to find you. I'm guessing you don't remember what happened. I went away again, didn't I? Why are we here? You told me there was a squad. I was about to be attacked. This is where it happened, isn't it? A long time ago. Yes. My squad. The Sky Clan ambushed us, slaughtered them all. It would have been... 30 years ago now. Fenira thinks you've been sneaking off into the forest to hunt. But you've been coming back here. There's no easy way to say this, Skoroka. She's hurt. Bad. She tried to stop you from leaving. I hurt her? But I would never... No! Everything is... a fog. I feel like I've been wandering through it, lost, my blade unfamiliar in my hand. And when it finally clears, I can't remember what I was doing or why. I'm always just alone in the forest. How long has it been like this? This fog? Weeks, months maybe. At first I thought it was a passing thing. Like forgetting after a knock on the head. Then names and faces became... difficult. And I started finding myself in the forest, unsure how I got there. Why haven't you told Fenira? What was I supposed to say? That I'm unraveling like a frayed, weak rope? No! But look where that's gotten you. She has no idea why you hurt her. So the Sky Clan ambushed your squad a long time ago? We were almost through with our patrol. About to head back to the village when they swarmed us. I alone survived. When my wounds scarred, I returned here and built a memorial where my comrades fell. And then I struck down twice as many of their soldiers in retribution. Such were the clan wars. Earlier, you said the enemy had been trying to take the Lowland Territory for years. I guess that was during the Clan Wars? Before Hikaru became our chief, our clans were constantly at war. We fought over every inch of this forest. The ruined village nearby is a remnant of those days. No matter how many soldiers fell, there was always another vendetta to pursue. They say that's why the wood of the Sentinels runs red. For the generations of blood spilled. We should head back to the village. Wait. The memorial. It's missing a piece there. A marker of metal. Made from the blades of my fallen comrades. Where is it? It has to be around here somewhere. I have to find it. I know it's... I know it's here. Hey, calm down. Let me take a look. Okay. Tracks. Leading away from the memorial. Lead the way.
Clamber jaws. They might have scrapped the marker. Filthy scavengers. On your lead. Find the marker. Might be in one of the Clamberjaw scrap piles. I'll stand watch in case more machines no marker show up. Here. I better check the scrap pile. Here, I gotta check another scrap pile. <laughs> Got the marker. Now to give this back to Goroka. Over here, Aloy. Did you find it? Here. I think this is the missing marker. Yes, that's it. I'll return it to the memorial. You go on ahead. I want to spend some time to remember my comrades. Are you sure? I'll be fine. The fog is gone for now. All right. I'll head back to the village and let Fenira know you're okay. Thank you, Eli. Well, at least I can tell Fenira why Garoka's been running off. Back to Tide's Reach, then. Don't worry about me, I'll head back to Tide's Reach soon. I just need a few moments. I won't be long. Darix, Janira, Riva, and... Oh, what was his name? Takalo, that's it. Don't worry about me, I'll head back to Tide's Reach soon. You're back. But where's my father? It's okay. I found him. He's not deranged, Fenira. He's been forgetting things, 
more and more. He thought he was still in the Clan Wars, that he could save his squad from an ambush. When we got to the memorial, he came back to the present. So it's like he's been lost in a fog. Wait. I've heard of something similar, a rare occurrence among chaplains. Their memory fades with the long years. Garoka's not a chaplain, but he is the age of one. Before Hikaru became chief, few of us would live to be so old. So that's why. Oh, thank the Ten. If he was found to be insane, then by rights he'd be put to death. What? No, he's just getting old. He needs care, not a death sentence. Pretty sure the rest of the village sees that as one and the same. But we'll keep a close eye on him. Speaking of, where is he now? Here. Little spear. I, I'm so sorry. It's all right, Father. You're home safe. And I understand now. When the fog comes, I'll hold your hand tight and remember for you. You don't have to be afraid. Thank you for all your help. Please, accept this. Your deeds here, what you've done for Fenira, will always, always be remembered. Thank you, Aloy. Aloy? Yes, Aloy. Hey, uh, Mr. Know-it-all is here. You know, you're focused, buddy, who never smiles. I didn't know what to do with him, so I had him wait in your room. Got it. Thanks. Well, Silence, looks like you finally found a door you could open without me. I'm glad it's there, actually. It kept me from having to mingle with the company you keep. But enough prattle. I believe you owe me an explanation. Your plans for the Zenith base? You're right. I do owe you. My spear in your throat for deceiving me again. At the Hades Proofing Lab. I doubt you asked me here for that kind of reckoning. No. Right now, I need your help. So I'm giving you one final chance. But if you ever betray me again, I will kill you no matter what the circumstance. Understood? Very well. Though we'll both face a decidedly short future if you can't get us inside that base. Aloy, your other guest is here. She's, um, coming to you. Thanks. Good timing. The truth is, I can't actually get us into the base. But, she can. The company you keep is even worse than I thought. Not a fan of surprises, are you? Oh, look. That must be your little invention. 
Does the weapon work? Without self-destructing? Of course it does. I have eliminated the imperfections and greatly improved its design and output. How can we be sure? Care for a demonstration. Enough, both of you. We're in this together, at least for now. Go talk to Erend. Tell him I said to give you rooms of your own. I'll come see you when I get a chance. Oh no, you first. Better get everyone in the control room, so Tilda can tell us what she knows about the Zenith base. With Regal out of the way, Hikaru and Tanakh, they're safe. The future's up to them now. I do wish they'd drop all the honorary names they've given me. But if I've learned anything about them, that it's not a battle I am going to win. Seems happy with it. Probably because he could crush me like a great bit. Did you need something? Bravo. You managed to sway a zenith to your side. Care to explain? Not a chance. I thought you said the weapon was ready. There's always room to optimize. But that's not why you're here. I assume you want to comprehend my undertakings. So, ask away. Since when were you so forthcoming? Since you turned this into a waiting game. And as it seems you have found modest success perhaps I'm willing to be generous okay so your big plan everything you've been manipulating for the last few months let me see if I got this straight you learned about the Zenith from Hades when you interrogated it then you came up with a plan to defeat them by using a Tanakh army and that weapon and to get the Tanakh to fight for you you, or rather the sons of Prometheus, armed Regala's rebels with override tech. Did you have an actual question, or are you still playing catch-up? So all this time, even before I found the coordinates at the Spire, you were out here scheming. Why couldn't you just tell me? When I learned of the Zenith's return to Earth, I laid out my plans. I knew I would one day require an army of overzealous Tanakh to assault the Zenith base. The casualties would be... Extreme, and I knew you would never allow such a sacrifice no matter how necessary. Thus, I devised a means to remove your interference from the equation at the Hades Proving Lab. Why create the Sons of Prometheus? You didn't need a Sarah to make override tech. They were a necessary safeguard. My time serving Hades in the Eclipse demonstrated the risks of getting directly involved. Through the sons of Prometheus, I could execute my plans, all while remaining anonymous. 
Except to a Sarah. How did you get a Sarah to work for you? I knew there was an associate of the Osiram Tinker Durval, who escaped his failed assault on Meridian. It was trivial to track her down and gain her cooperation. She wanted to succeed where Durval had failed. So you promised her Regala, and the Tanakhth. The Sarah would help you create a machine-writing army, and wanted to see Meridian burn as much as she did. And so a partnership was born out of thirst for blood, bonded in mutual self-interest. You think you had everything figured out, huh? I did. You wanted me to surrender to the Zenith at the Hades Proving Lab. They almost killed me. Based on everything I knew about them, I concluded they would find you a useful asset. Thereby keeping you out of harm's way, and more importantly, out of my way. So you really didn't know they had their own clone of Elizabeth? No. Unfortunately, there was no way I could have known that particular detail. Detail? Well, I guess if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be here today. Tell me about the weapon. How does it work? I've upgraded the delivery system. It now emits a wave-like effect covering a significant distance. <sighs> that doesn't fully answer my question. No, but I'd be a fool to reveal its inner workings. After all, why did you withhold your plan for dealing with the Zenith drones? Yes, even you can appreciate the value of secrecy when warranted. Suffice it to say that the weapon will work. The intricacies of how is knowledge that is mine alone. Why help Regala take over? If you wanted an army, you could have just gone to Hakaro. Before Regala's rebellion, Hakaro was only concerned with battling machines and fostering friendships with Akarja. Even if I gained his ear, he would never agree to send his forces to battle a threat he couldn't understand. So helping a bloodthirsty exile was easier? Yes. Exceedingly so. All Regala craved was war against the Karja and anyone who threatens the Tanakht. She would have led the tribe into battle without question, which was precisely what I needed. While I was out there, I had a couple run-ins with the Quen. The tribe from across the ocean. And? Their entire tribe was shaped around the discovery of focuses. One of them, Alva, even joined me here. Don't you want to know more about them? No. They stumbled upon the greatest technological artifact from the ancient world, and what did they do with it? They shrouded the knowledge they unearthed in mysticism and taboo, creating a pantheon out of corporate shields. Yes, well, it also led them to Thebes. Did it now? So those run-ins with the Quinn I mentioned. On one of them, I teamed up with their expedition to search Thebes. We found Pharaoh at the end. You must have needed Omega clearance. So, what was it like? Worse than you can imagine. He single-handedly wiped out collective human knowledge. I'm sure it was still less than he deserved. Let me guess. You would have scraped him into a jar so you could prod his brain, like what you did with Hades. For a start. All right, Silence, I think I've talked to you long enough. I'll let you know when it's time to go. And try not to mess with Tilda while you're in here, okay? I don't need the two of you butting heads. Ah, uh, yes. About your Zenith ally. I wonder if you understand what kind of person you're dealing with. For someone to live as long as she has, outlast as many calamities, well, your goals may be aligned now, but I'd watch for the moment they diverge. Yeah, I'm aware. Reminds me of someone else I know. Survival is only a necessity to my greater purpose, Aloy. I'd hoped you'd recognize that by now. Do you know something or not? Oh, I know a great deal of things. But on this, just call it... a feeling. Oh, a feeling? You mean you finally had one? Huh. Guess even you can change, Silence.
I can do yours if you want. I cleaned it all of you. Of course. Thank you. Don't mention it. You... you flew? Cotalo told me! And took out Regala's machines? <laughs> you know what? I don't even know why I'm surprised. I saw we have visitors... and a new weapon. Does this mean we're ready to take the fight to the Zeniths? Almost. Are you okay? I was wondering... Is it really safe having someone like Regala here? She seems angry. The kind of angry that leads to murdering people in their sleep. Don't worry. We're going to point that anger in the right direction. The Zeniths. If you say so. I hope our new guests have been behaving. The silence. He's the one who built the weapon that can take down Zenith shields? He is. Though I wouldn't expect him to answer any questions about it. He refuses to dole out his secrets to us lesser mortals. Oh. You know that special part of us that makes us warm, kind, welcoming? Our... spirit? Yeah. He was born without that. You sure you're okay going on this mission? I know things must be happening pretty fast for you. Uh, I've already braved oceans and madmen who thought they were ancestors reborn. Why not a few immortals with lethal drones at their command too? Guess the more the merrier. I suppose you saw that Tilda is here, our very own Zenith. I almost went up to her, to ask her, well, every question I've ever had about the legacy. Every diviner I know would kill to get five minutes with one of the old ones. But now that she's here, all I feel is a vague unease. I don't know if I'm scared of finding out more uncomfortable truths, or just scared of her. Probably both. I need to wrap up a few things, but stay sharp. I'll be ready when you call. thinking we could spar for a bit, when you have the time. Oh, uh, sure, yeah, of course. I see you've got your new arm ready to go. Yes. It still feels strange. I've gotten used to the absence, but no matter. I'm sure I will need it before the attack on the Zenith base is through. I haven't seen you since the battle at the Grove. How are you holding up? I saw you fly on the wings of the Ten, and paralyze Regala's army with lightning. I would say that I am... <sighs> inspired. Thank you, I guess. It is I who should be thanking you. Look. I know you're probably not happy about keeping Regala around, but I want her on our side when we fight the Zeniths. It is more than she deserves. Even so, I will not question your judgment. Thank you, Catalo. 
Anything new going on I should know about? But Quen has been more insistent than usual, asking about the visions at the Grove. Her pursuit of knowledge is relentless. The Ten would have a hard time fighting her off. Just think of her like one of your chaplains. Yes. Only more persistent. Things will get ugly once the Zenus realize we're in their base. You'll need every trick you've ever learned. I would have it no other way. Many soldiers died in the old world to make sure we stood here today. We will endure on their behalf. Though, I am curious how you intend to defeat the Zenith's defenses without an army of our own. Leave that to me. Just make sure you're ready to fight. As you say. You have more than earned my trust. Did you meet Tilda? There is something about her that doesn't seem natural. I wouldn't be surprised if my sword went through her and, and she didn't bleed at all. Honestly, with her, nothing would surprise me. Your people keep mentioning the wings of the Ten. What exactly does it mean? The visions tell us that the Ten flew on great metal machines with wings and leapt into battle from the sky. For us, to imitate this feat is the ultimate expression of martial prowess. It is why the challengers leap into the arena during the Kulrut. And now, you have done it. <laughs> like the deeds of the Ten themselves, it will never be forgotten. So, tell me. How did it feel? I won't lie. Pretty good. I can only imagine. I have to go. But I'll be briefing everyone on the plan soon. Understood. Aloy, you came back with some interesting friends. I wish I could say we don't need them, but Silence and Tilda are here for a reason. Even Regala. Yeah, enemy of my enemy and all that, right? Right. I guess Silence is keeping to himself, as usual. I was hoping you'd give me an excuse to hammer his sorry ass to the ground. Please don't. You telling me you wouldn't want to get just one good hit on that smug face of his? After everything he's done? Sure. Later. Right now, he's got something we need. Doesn't look like any of our guests are making trouble. Yet. So... Catalo tells me you flew. Well, that's new. I've been busting my bolts trying to learn to read. You're, you're out there having all the fun. Don't worry. They'll be getting all the fun you can handle soon. With the Zeniths. 
Looking forward to it. You, uh, talked to Tilda at all? I tried. I don't think even a hot forge could melt that ice. And you say she wants to help? I think so. Well, let's hope. I better get going. Well, you know where to find me. Aloy. It appears that we have some interesting new guests. I'm glad to see you're okay, though. I heard you gave the Tanakh something to talk about. I was half expecting you to burst in through the ceiling riding a sunwing. Sorry to disappoint. Have you talked to any of our new friends? Aaron and I tried speaking to Silence, but apparently our tribal prattle is unnecessary. Charming, isn't he? Ready to head over to the Zenith base? Whatever comes, we will endure. Thoughts on our new Zenith acquaintance? I'd say she smells like death, but even death smells of something. She's more like a cold piece of metal, bent on repelling all semblance of life. She's definitely different. I have to go. I trust you to keep things civil around here? I'll make sure Aaron doesn't punch Silence in the face, if that's what you mean. Thanks. This will break my fall. This place smells wrong. No sand or wind, only cold steel. And the others up there, your squad. They can hold their own. As for this base, it may not be what you're used to. But it is a shelter. Call it what it is. A cage. You came here on your own. For the battle you promised. So for now I wait in my cage for your word. Tell me when to strike. The whole time I've been in the West, I've been fighting you and your rebels. I'd at least like to know why. You were among the enemy. What more is there to know? Why did you do it? Dorok, Jeroka, Makalo, and the Karja pushed into the desert to raid our people. My brother's squad was among the first to intercept them. But the Karja captured them, strung them up, and burned them alive as an example. It was too late. I found them by the sound of their screams. So you wanted vengeance? Vengeance. No. I wanted devastation. To tear down the Karja's cities and drown the land in blood. Hunt down every last survivor and grind their bones until the sky chokes on the dust. But my chief betrayed me. Betrayed the Tanakh. How did Hikaro betray you? Hikaro called on the clans to resist the Karja's red raids. But we did more than just defend. We hunted them. And they fled 
as children before a pack of claw striders all the way to their border. There we ripped down their stone walls. Their domain was ours for the taking. But when it came time to push on, Hakaro ordered us to fall back. What soldier retreats when slaughter is at hand? The kind who wants peace for their people. Peace is just a lull between vendettas. But I thought my chief had greater tactics than mine, so I stood by him, even when he allowed that filthy Karja to join our ranks. Fashav. I enjoyed watching him die at the embassy. He should have been put down when we first captured him on the field. Instead, Hikaro made him a marshal. Fashav told me how he became a marshal. He earned it just like any Tanakh. It was an insult. No outlander can ever deserve to wear our armor, bear our marks. And then Akarja messenger was brought before us? That's when I knew. I had to run my blade through Akaro and drag his treacherous corpse to the gates of the sun. What happened when the Karja messenger appeared before Hikaro? The quivering priest bore a message from their new king. No more war. No more raids. Suddenly the Karja wanted to talk peace. An embassy at the very fortress we tore down? A true Danak would never take a Karja truce. Their blood exists to be spilled. But Hikaro lapped up the priest's message. He showed himself a Karja-loving traitor when he accepted. That's when I challenged him. And lost. His mercy was just another sign of his weakness. I vowed never to rest until the debt was repaid, with him on his knees before me. So with an army of soldiers and machines at my back, I returned day you got in my way. The deal you made. Override tech in exchange for an assault on the Zenith base. How did Silence approach you? That name means nothing to me. My agreement was with the Asarama Sarah and her sons of Prometheus. So all this time, you didn't even know who you were really dealing with? And you trusted an outlander? If it was a trick, I would have crushed her. But she spoke with the same burning hatred for the Karja. And she offered me the chance to run them down with machines. The terror in your enemy's eyes when they see you charge. You know what I'm talking about. I bet you felt it. I don't think so. What about your end of the deal? Would you have honored it? Had I killed Akaro and become chief, these Zeniths would have been the first of the tribe's victories. But because of you, my people will continue to consort with the enemy. A tribe of weaklings. <laughs> because of me, hundreds of Tanakh won't throw away their lives in a battle they can't win. Are you really going to fight alongside me? I have no reason to betray you. Really? I failed to kill Hakaro. Failed to eliminate you. No Tanakhth would follow me now. The Karja remain out of my reach, cowering behind their walls. All I have left are the screams of those long dead and unending rage. So show me where to bury. All right. I guess we'll both face the end soon enough. Ever since you got in my way, I've wanted to see your bones burned white beneath the sun. But if I'm to die in battle, then it might as well be with the one who flew with the wings of the ten. I'll let you know when it's time to move out.
Let you wait for him. We're taking those space lugs down. So, you return.
There you are. Well done, Aloy. Despite my reservations, you managed to secure Silence and his weapon. You're truly a shining example of Liz's fortitude. I've been thinking about what you said at your house. How you were friends with Elizabeth. It was more than that, wasn't it? Perceptive as ever. You're right, we were together for a time. Okay, so... What happened? I was an orphan. I had always been alone. By my 30s, I was starting to wonder if that was simply my fate in life. And then I met Liz. We kept running into each other at conferences. We'd have coffee. At some point, it became drinks. I thought it was just shop talk, an exchange of ideas, but then I was surprised at how much I looked forward to seeing her. Soon we were flying halfway across the world every other week just to meet up. For the first time, I didn't feel lonely. I could imagine a future where I wasn't. I think Liz felt the same way at first. She had lost her mother a few years back. I filled a void for her. I know I did. But as time passed, it seemed as though she wanted less when I wanted more. And so we ended things. So helping me, restoring Elizabeth's dream, it's what? A, a second chance, yes. I made a mistake leaving Earth while Liz stayed behind. I should have done more. So when I saw you, a woman who has carved her own remarkable path beyond even what made Liz a phenomenon. I knew I had to help you. To do right by her. You said before that you're not like the other Zeniths. That you never were. But you went along with all of their plans. Out of necessity. I'm not proud of it, but complicity became a means of survival, both when Earth was consumed and when the colony on Sirius was destroyed. I did what I had to, but I resolved to remain one step ahead of the others to try to undo what damage I could, hence the data channel with Beta, the secret passage into their base and the little trick I pulled to save you. Why did you make the data channel look like your house? I built that house as a shelter to weather any storm. A safe place, not just for me, but for the art stored in its depths. Cultural artifacts of incalculable value. Truly, some of the greatest achievements of human civilization. And you wanted Beta to see them? Yes. Her upbringing was so cold and technical. I thought if she could experience Vermeer and Rembrandt, it would bring something else into her life. A heritage every bit as valuable as the scientific and technical data being drummed into her. I'm sorry I had to cut off contact, but I'll never regret sharing this house with her. She needed its shelter even more than I did. Why do you think Elizabeth pulled away. I've wondered that for a thousand years. She was brilliant, visionary. She cared so deeply for the world, for the betterment of humanity. But it also felt like she kept everyone at arm's length, including me. She never wanted to share her burdens. I think in the end, she had a core that she never let anyone be part of. Sometimes I wonder if anyone really knew her. I found a recording of you and Elizabeth back in the Proving Lab after Farzinet's attempt to steal Gaia. Yes, 
a most unpleasant conversation. She said something after the call. I think she regretted how things ended between you. Did she? All this time, thank you for telling me. I've always hated that those were the last words we ever said to each other. And that her last impression of me was as a functionary of Far Zenith, not who I truly am. When it's time to break into the Zenith base, what can we expect? I'll go over the full layout once you've assembled your friends. Suffice it to say, we will need to push as fast as possible to Beta and Gaia's location, dealing with heavy resistance along the way. There are also printing facilities where the others have been amassing the natural resources they've stripped from the region. What for? First for use in the base's infrastructure, and then to fabricate more Spectre drones, a small army of them. When I was out in the wilds, I saw a shuttle take off from the island, heading for space. It was likely ferrying materials to and from our ship in orbit. After hundreds of years luxuriating in our digital comforts, the ship was barely space-worthy when we made our escape. Disaster can strike at any moment. We've learned our lesson. Have you figured out how Silence's weapon works? No, and he's been very careful not to allow me near it. I'll admit it bothers me, but... Regardless of how it functions, I am confident it will deactivate the other shields en masse. How many of them are in the base? Ten, including Eric and Gerard. Only a handful of us made it to our ship when our colony collapsed. So, Eric, was he always a bloodthirsty psychopath? I believe he got worse over time. On Earth, he was the founder of a profitable private military company. A band of cutthroats, in other words. Even as governments abandoned human combatants in favor of automated warfare. He found success with clientele that required a more personal touch. There were also rumors that he personally hunted and killed his targets. On occasion, all for the thrill of it. But on Sirius, he retreated to virtual reality simulations. In them, he could go on rampages as violent as he pleased, though I suspect with diminishing satisfaction. All of us tribe believes he was one of the greatest people from the old world. Then they would be quite disappointed to meet him, though I'm sure he'd bask in the adoration. What can you tell me about Gerard? He was the head of the world's largest financial conglomerate, and as such had dealings with almost every major corporation. It made him one of the wealthiest people on Earth, and certainly the wealthiest among Far Zenith. What does one person do with that much money? Buy more, more power, more influence. Gerard's always believed himself to be a refined patrician able to maintain control with a polished smile. But beneath that exterior is a cold and calculating operator. It was his decision to restrict Beta's upbringing to her digital educators, the avatars of the Apollo database, while we were painted as her benefactors. Well, we'll deal with him soon enough, and the others. I would very much like to see his face when he realizes we've beaten him. When I was in the ruins of Vegas, I found data on a man named Stanley Chen. I think he was a Zenith. Stanley, ever the optimist. He was one of the good ones. When we established our colony, he built an exact replica of Las Vegas in virtual reality. Lights, shows, gambling, Every detail perfectly recreated. And while others cloistered themselves in their own fantasies, he flung his doors wide to everyone. The way you're talking about him, I'm guessing he didn't make it back to Earth? No, he perished when our colony was destroyed. He would have been thrilled to discover that part of his beloved city survived. What 
When Beta escaped and hid in an ancient research facility, I saw another one of the Zeniths. For Baina. Who was she? A dull star amidst a sea of brighter constellations. Unlike most of Far Zenith's members who amass their wealth through shrewd business deals and technological achievements, Verbena inherited her billions. Her father had achieved great success in the luxury holotourism industry. At age 24, she became the world's most eligible bachelorette, branding herself a life designer. Someone who leverages their fame to influence the choice of others. What? Like a cult? In a way, yes. Well, she must have done something right to have survived this long. She was her own brand of ruthless. That much is true. But even rats can cling to a vessel for escape. Okay, so I've had run-ins with a handful of Zeniths. What about the rest? An array of the wealthiest people on Earth. Titans of their industries. And let me guess, all selfish and ruthless to the core? Most, but not all. There were a few with whom I got along. Annika Merjani, for instance, was always delightful. She founded the Holonet's most successful dance channel and was herself mesmerizing to watch. And I had fascinating discussions with Song Jiao about her work in cellular biology. Our immortality treatments are due in part to her achievements. But then there were others like Devin Miller, the CEO of a fast food printing corporation. His only real preoccupations were perfecting his golf swing and taking self hollows. When I think about all of us, we really should have accomplished more. We had eternity. Okay. I'll let you know when it's time. I'll be here until then. And thank you, Aloy, for giving me this chance. My past has always been a struggle. More than once, I've lost everything. But when I look to the future, I see Liz's dream fulfilled. A universe of new possibilities. Maybe we can make it happen. We will. I won't let anything get in the way. I promise you that.
Honor and strength. Can't let the cold distract me. Walk with strength. She blew in with the desert wind. Her garlic in the challenge. Outlander. Outlander. Will you pray? Fight. Fighting really over? I hope an honest trade is an honorable trade.
much damage from fire.
Throw this green shine off carefully. It feels a lot sharper when I'm flying.
Using frost won't help here.
full. I can get it for my stash later.
A good warrior cares for her equipment. Shards until they are spent. Yeah, do that again. Show me your medals, champion, and I'll show you. What can I do for you, Aloy? I think you might want these back. I'm glad these are back where they belong. You must have cleared every outpost in the wilds. Looks like we have the enemy on the run. More importantly, our dead can now be bagged and tagged properly thanks to you. May the ten be with them.
everything that's happened. Here, like these belong to one of the fallen. The he left no Good family try. behind. But I know he'd be honored to have a that. true soldier have him. Thank you. Asking you to. I'll take good care of you. Sure. But you and me? Oh, Maybe even catch sorry. Some fights in the arena. No problem. Earn more medals and the rewards will be great. Well, I guess I should go. Safe travels. Only the best soldiers can go up against the arena's toughest machines. Tomorrow's rain, the grove is reborn. It's like the ten have spoken to us anew. We'd serve with those soldiers for years. Hey! Blades against Radal. This on. With everything that's happened, I never I thought you'd see the vision. I picked it up right as the machine lunged at me. Aloy. Are you the only one listening to these voices? Oh, no. The others who captured the Osiram voices from these, they spread the word, and now a lot of soldiers are interested. Will the new voices... I don't know much about this, so anything I can look... I hope you find what you want. Negative, negative. You can't make the primary drop, so we're rerouting you to collect... Negative, negative. 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 Champion.
new armor. Walk with strength. For God. We're defeated. Honor and strength. Honor those who fought them. Come, trade. Carl's enemies fall before him. Don't those look like snow clouds? Outlander, the craft of the Tanakh awaits you here. Turn again, and we will trade. Welcome, Outlander. I've heard of you, Outlander. Your exploits. Walk with honor. The boy's family was grateful, and his squad cheered your name. Thank you for helping me rescue the child. I haven't had to kill anyone recently, so that's something. Maybe I can avoid it the next time a rival pops up.
go faster, children. Come on. May you ever walk in fear. So, welcome, how about all this sand, huh? Uh, yeah. And this heat. Oh, yeah, this heat. It's really hot. Steel flame. Look what the desert winds blew in. I'm standing right here, Porgy. Stop calling me that. You used to love that name. Porgy's lucky I came out west. This place needs a lot of work. Ha! <laughs> you should have seen when we first got here. It was just a puddle in the sand. Well, this ain't much of an improvement. You really set things right around here, Steel Flame. For the Delve, and with my sister. Thanks. Thank you, Ava. Steel Flame! Look what the desert winds... Off you go, children. Bye again. May you always walk. One hunter to another. May your arrows find their mark. No, that's not her. Can't be. Must have knocked over the stairs of the porch, Ellie. That was rebels? Tell me more. I'm going on it. Walk past Thurless old shop and trip over one of the stairs. This is Cotton Notch Delvin, claim here. It didn't go boom. Why? Know you? Well, I hope a brick and bank tripped him up. You have machines around here now, oh, yeah, thanks to you. Right. Get around it. Sorry, well, uh. I'll draw the shards from your pockets next time. Frostamo could help here. Oh, 
found up here. the screenshot. Too far. She turned around. Be welcome, Elven. Ow! Ah, ah. Welcome to my life. Does this mean you're buying us all drinks then? Not if I drink the tavern dry first. Grape is our haven. We need not fear the Osseron. Lukasha, how have you been? Better now, Aloy. When we laid Savohar to rest, I prayed and prayed. I wanted guidance so badly. A way forward. A new home for our people. But no vision came. So what did you do? At first, I felt despair. Then it occurred to me, maybe I saw no vision because the answer was right before my eyes. Maybe the twilight path led us right where we are supposed to be. Maybe our new home is here. Petra has been kind to us, given us food, found us work. Some are even helping with her forge. I'm glad you found your place, Lakasha. 
Chain scrape is no paradise. But it is enough. What about you, Aloy? Have you found your place? I am. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not sure I have one. Sounds like you need a beacon. I hope you find it. And your home. Savohar now walks unburdened in the house of the sun. But I miss him. Sparks fly out there. I'll uh, see you around, Petra. Until next time. Here. 